Do you struggle from uncomfortable bloating and gas? Between supplements, doctor's visits, labs, trying to fix it can be very expensive. Google searching can work, but more times than others, you're left with more questions than answers. Having reliable data though is almost always helpful in determining what you should do next. And what is known as functional stool testing may be an excellent tool to help you. What's up everyone, my name is Dr. Daniel Ricciardi. I'm a functional medicine practitioner, licensed pharmacist, and fitness enthusiast. I help clients with chronic bloating and gas and other unwanted gut issues so they can get back to looking and feeling their best. As I mentioned before, these functional stool tests can be incredibly helpful in determining why somebody may have symptoms. However, I would not recommend that everybody immediately just go out and have this test done. The main reason is they just cost a few hundred dollars and quite frankly, they may not be necessary. More times than not, it's usually the cheapest and most simple options and interventions that work best. Definitely make sure that you've tried a bunch of simple and free interventions, such as using the information from my bloating and gas guide, a link for it is in the description below, doing an elimination diet, or depending on symptoms, maybe supporting with digestive support supplements, such as betaine, HCL with pepsin, digestive enzymes, bile support, whatnot. But if you have tried several of these and they have not been helpful, opting for a functional stool test may be a good option for you. These functional stool tests test your actual bowel movement for a number of different markers. As a quick note, these tests are not SIBO tests. They measure the matter of the large intestines, not the small intestines, but they still can provide some great insights on what can kind of be going on in your gut. Although there's several different brands, it's different companies that make these functional stool tests. Most of them have many similarities in the markers that they actually measure. The one that I've used the most and prefer is one called GI Map, and it's made by Diagnostic Solutions Laboratory. Quick disclaimer again, I am not affiliated nor compensated by Diagnostic Solutions Laboratory in any way. Some of the things that this GI map tests for specifically are the following. One, pathogenic or harmful bacteria. This is pretty self-explanatory what they are. We want this level to be as low as possible on these. And number two is levels of good or commensal bacteria. You want these kind of to be right in the range provided, the normal range. Three, certain yeast and viruses such as Candida and Epstein-Barr virus. Uh, this test doesn't check for a lot of different yeast and viruses but there are a few couple major ones that it does include. And as you might expect for these, we want the results to be in the low or undetectable zone. It tests for H. pylori, which if you've heard of, you know it's a nasty GI bug causing a lot of ulcers and other unwanted gut issues. You want these to be obviously lower in the undetectable range. Also tests for parasites, same as H. pylori, we kind of want it in the low to undetectable range as well. Although parasite sounds like an awful thing to have, if you do have one that shows up as detectable, even though it's low, it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world. A lot of people have a low level of parasites just kind of living in their bowel and it never actually causes them any issues. So just wanted to make that point clear on the parasites. In addition to just testing for the gut bugs, there's some other intestinal markers which can provide some valuable information as to what dynamics may be going on in the gut. And one of these is called the steatocrit, which is a measure of how much fat is in the stool. Getting a high level of this may indicate either malabsorption or maldigestion of dietary fat. We want this marker to be in the low or non-detectable range. There's also elastase 1, which is an enzyme secreted only by the pancreas. It's a great marker of pancreatic function, as this marker cannot be secreted by any other area in the body except the pancreas. Ideally, we want this level to be high, over 500 micrograms per gram. And then there's beta-glucuronidase, which is an enzyme that leads to increased toxicity in the body. Basically, when a toxin is bound in the intestines for excretion, this enzyme comes along and essentially unbinds the toxin so it can be absorbed back into the body. As you might expect from this one, high levels of it can be associated with gut dysbiosis or imbalance or problems with detoxification in the body. If the levels are in fact high as well, it does put you at increased risk of colon cancer. This test also measures for secretory IgA, which is a type of antibody. Having a low level may mean that the immune system is suppressed and not able to fight off an infection. 
whereas a high level may be due to an overgrowth of harmful bacteria, perhaps high toxin levels, food sensitivities, or just a poor diet in general. And for the most part, we want this marker to be kind of right smack in the middle in the mid range. There's another type of antibody called an anti-gliadin antibody or anti-gliadin IgA. Gliadin is a component of gluten and seeing the presence of this antibody indicates an immune response to gluten. So if the level is high, I'd highly recommend trying going 100% gluten-free and adding in some gut healing supplements as well. A couple of those may include glutamine and zinc carnosine. And last one I'll talk about here is a marker called calprotectin, which is an inflammatory marker. High levels are associated just with a high inflammatory response in the gut. Uh, it's not particularly diagnostic of any condition. There's some links to irritable bowel disease with a high calprotectin level. And in general, we want this marker to be low. These are some of the markers. Obviously, if you do a different brand test, you may have a little bit different markers that they test for and whatnot. Are these tests perfect and completely comprehensive of everything? No, they're not. Is it possible that if you do take a test like this, you may not have any special aha moments or findings when you take the test? Yes, that is possible. And is it also possible that you'll have to do continued testing after you take a test like a functional stool test to really figure out what is actually driving the symptoms? Yes, that is also possible. And to repeat myself once more, these functional stool tests, they're not SIBO tests, so they're not meant to diagnose SIBO. They test what's in the large intestines. Although they're not diagnostic of SIBO, these tests really can help you decide what the next move you should do in the future is. Last year, I was working with a client who was struggling with diarrhea and was pretty certain that he had SIBO. After doing a GI MAP test though, we actually found out that he had a very low amount of good bacteria. This kind of completely changed the way we went about doing treatment because previously we were gonna throw some antimicrobial herbs at him first and see if that was gonna help. Instead, we started with some very targeted specific probiotics instead of the antimicrobial herbs. This helped reduce inflammation, rebalance the microbiome, and helped with a lot of the bloating that he was experiencing. Is it possible that he actually did have SIBO? Maybe, yes. Probiotics can also treat SIBO though, which I made a video previously about that. And correcting the most obvious glaring issue, which was the very low levels of good commensal bacteria, is the most obvious choice, makes the most sense, and ultimately help resolve his diarrhea and bloating. Thank you for watching. That is everything I have for you today. In terms of functional tests that are giving you the highest value, doing a functional stool test is a fantastic option. I hope you found this video to be both enjoyable and helpful. Let me know what questions you have in the comments section below. I appreciate you for watching. Feel free to check out both my previous and future videos. I post a new one at 6 p.m. Central Time every Monday. Thank you very much and have a great week.